Hi, this is P. Andrew Sandlin, founder and president of the Center for Cultural Leadership. A marriage is uh, obviously uh, under severe attack in our uh, culture today, but it's equally under attack uh, in the church, even in the conservative church. Um, recently, Ed Shaw, one of the leaders of a ministry called Living Out and uh, writing in the uh, publication of the Gospel Coalition Australia uh, stated that there was a serious problem uh, in the evangelical church um, and uh, it essentially relates to the fact he says that uh, marriage is being made an uh, idol by evangelicals. Uh, his ministry, Living Out, um, led by him and various other people, uh, is committed to helping so-called same-sex attracted um, single adults, especially young adults, find a welcoming place in the church where they can continue on in their same-sex attraction. Uh, it's a misnomer, by the way. Uh, my friend Benjamin John of Christian Concern says it should be called uh, SST, same-sex temptation. Uh, after all, we wouldn't say that the evangelical church should create a special place for males, for example, that have a problem with uh, lusting after women that are not their wives. But for some reason, we're expected to create an entire category of individuals that have a problem lusting uh, after people um, of their own sex. Um, in the midst of this uh, is a notion that uh, singleness or celibacy, uh, the idea that uh, in this case these uh, lusts, these desires, these same-sex desires are permissible and should be honored and respected as long as they're not consummated in um, the act of sodomy. Um, this notion uh, that these people therefore simply remain single, and that singleness is a very high calling and an exalted calling, uh, higher than uh, marriage, is gaining a great deal of traction among uh, so-called conservatives. They're not really conservative, of course. There's, there's nothing um, historic in that position, and it's certainly not a, a biblical position. Uh, those who hold this view tend to point almost entirely to a uh, Paul's statement, 1 Corinthians 7, where he is clearly um, advising uh, the single celibate state. Uh, the problem that those who advocate this view have is they often don't recognize that Paul states plainly that he is writing for a temporary situation, a distressing situation. It's the only time in the Bible, to my knowledge, also, that uh, Paul said he's writing this by permission from the Lord and not a commandment. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be in the scriptures. It means that this is something he asked the Lord to write and the Lord said, yes, you may. Um, <clears throat> the argument is also made that Jesus was single and therefore it's preferable to be a single and one can be closer to the Lord in general if he is single. Uh, of course, they do not recognize that Christ in fact does have a bride metaphorically uh, but one reason he couldn't actually have a tactile physical bride is uh, there's no way he could fulfill his responsibility to her knowing of his uh, early death in his life, his horrific death that uh, pierced the heart of his own mother and his closest disciples. Imagine what it would have done to a, a wife. So the Lord is not a, a good example. Um, however, the Bible is quite clear that uh, marriage rather than singleness or celibacy, is the norm. We see that in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, when God created a man, and uh, God was not enough for the man. Uh, he needed a woman. It's fascinating. We often don't think about that, but <clears throat> uh, the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. But we might immediately think, well, man was not alone. He had a woman. Uh, uh, he had God, but God was not enough. He needed a being like him. A counterpart to him and so God created a woman not one whit inferior also made in God's image to complement him 
Um, it's often said as a uh, completer, but it actually means more than that. His, his counterpart, uh, his counterpart is the image of God. In that sense, God is reflected both in uh, male and uh, female. Uh, so then marriage is a creational norm. If you'll think about it, this really refutes the notion that, well, um, if you can remain single, you should remain single because obviously you can be much closer to the Lord and please him better and have greater devotion to him at any rate than if you're married um, because then you're sort of dividing your devotion uh, as though that's sort of a normative expression that Paul made in 1 Corinthians 7. But ponder that for a minute. If that were the case, then God creates Adam and Eve, and he, and if that were normative, that notion I just mentioned, he would have said, Adam, here's this woman, but make sure that you don't marry her, don't have any sexual relations with her, because if you do, she will draw you away from me. Well, that, of course, is so ridiculous as to be self-refuting. God created mammon and woman and saw everything and saw that it was good. Uh, therefore, uh, marriage itself is the creational norm, and singleness, celibacy, is the exception, and it's a rare exception. So all of you young single Christians listening to me, watching me right now, um, I would urge you, pray about, get on your face before God, use every legitimate means necessary to find a good spouse. Young men, ask God to give you a, a good wife, seek after a good wife. Whoever the Bible says finds a wife, finds a good thing, and will be blessed of the Lord. And uh, wife, you are, well, young ladies, you are made almost certainly uh, to complete a man's life. That's why God put these desires uh, within you, uh, legitimate desires, and for you young men, for young women. Um, the notion that singleness and celibacy, a celibacy rather, is some sort of uh, ideal, and that uh, marriage is secondary, is actually an assault on God's created order, and assault, as such an assault on the, the cosmology. I'm suggesting then that this is false doctrine, it needs to be rooted out of the church, and if teachers don't repent, they need to be rooted out of the church also. Um, so I would urge you, pastors and uh, Christian school teachers and administrators and so on, work to uh, create venues and situations in which young men and young women, not just young, perhaps some that are uh, older that need to be married, single, uh, have opportunities to meet one another and uh, to develop uh, good friendships, friendships that will lead to uh, godly marriages. This is a godly and holy and uh, righteous thing. Is it possible to idolize marriage? Of course, it's possible to idolize anything in God's created order. But our problem today isn't idolizing marriage. It's idolizing uh, autonomy, the single individual, what he or she wants. And uh, in this way, the singleness celibacy paradigm folks at uh, living out and sadly other evangelical uh, groups have bought into what Francis Schaeffer calls forms of the world spirit. They are profoundly worldly and they have turned their back on uh, God's, God's cosmological law. So my advice to you, if you're young and single, pray about and work at getting married. Uh, by God's grace, I've been married for 37 years and have five adult children and three grandchildren. I can assure you that aside from eternal life, the greatest gift God's given to me is my wife. I'm P. Andrew Sandlin, ChristianCulture.com. God bless each of you.